Coming up on DTNS, we look back at our 2022 predictions. Which came true and which ones were mine? This is the Daily Tech News Show for Thursday, December 29th, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. In Studio Colorado, I'm Shannon Morse. From the Atlanta area, I'm Nico Monfort. And in Philadelphia, I'm Stephanie Humphrey. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Folks, welcome to the DTNS Holiday Week 2022 Predictions Results episode, where we look back on the predictions we made about technology all the way back a year ago in December 2021 and see how they actually turned out. Uh, how's everybody feeling about your predictions as we uh, as we get ready to, to, to see how we did? I'm going to say 50-50. <laughs> I'm not feeling too good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Got to stay positive. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I this, I like doing this because it holds our feet to the fire. Not enough people do this. So I appreciate that all of you were willing to come and and say, you know what? Let's let's see what I said. Let's 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 evaluate how we did. It's not yeah. that you'll get it wrong. Everybody gets them wrong. It's when you get it right. That that's what makes it worth doing. That's the beauty part. Exactly. All right. Let's start with you, uh, Shannon. Uh, your first prediction that we'll cover was uh, that Google would release a Wear OS smartwatch using their own hardware, such as Tensor and or their Titan M2 chipset. Um, so I, I would say technically I was incorrect. They did release a Wear OS smartwatch. And it was made with their own hardware, but the chipsets that they chose were not their own hardware. They actually went with a um, Samsung Exynos mm -hmm. 9110, as well as a Corte uh, two Cortex A53 cores. So the internals were not Google, <laughs> but the rest was. <laughs> I think we give it to her. What do y'all think? I mean, are we doing like half points? <laughs> we can do like half partial point. credit. Can we do partial credit? I'm okay with partial credit. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm looking at the fact that she said uh, we'll release a Wear OS smartwatch using their own hardware, such as she left right. a little weird wiggle room there. That I, that was I a did. suggestion. So yeah, yeah you you were technically right. I guess technically okay. you were right. Yeah. All right. All right. We're giving okay. you, we're, we're giving you the point. You well, get it. Thanks. I Let's appreciate go. that Let's point. <laughs> Uh, what about this one? Late 2022, we'll see Google start teasing a foldable Android phone, but it won't release until 2023. Okay, this one's fun because in just like the past couple of weeks or in the last week, we've started to see leaks of renders um, and dimensions of a Pixel fo Fold phone. So we have an idea of what it looks like, but these are leaks. Mm. So... I don't necessarily know if Google has, you know, leaked these to the press or if this is something that people have internally like kind of gotten through other means. Uh, and we also don't know if these are factually correct yet. Uh, mm. But we we do know that Google has announced that they're going to be making a foldable in 2023. So that is something that we can look forward to. But so far, Google has not specifically Teased. said like yes this is what it looks like so <laughs> yeah we've seen leaks and that's about it uh -huh. um but i am i'm very excited given that this has just happened in like the last mm -hmm. week yeah you're cool. making it under the wire there yeah um, yeah yeah i don't know about this one though because you said they would tease it and yeah i don't know so if it, a leak counts as a tease i i don't think it counts <laughs> personally since it could it could be incorrect like we do not know specifically yet so i would say don't give me that point <laughs> <laughs> stephanie i'll, Mika, be, what do I'll you be honest to myself <laughs> um I, yeah i mean i guess if it's all kind of based on rumor and speculation yeah. we can't really yeah. say yes yeah, or no. not google's not actually releasing or, or teasing so I think we we may have to say no on this one. Now here's the thing: <laughs> yeah. we, uh, you know, pulling back the veil, we do record this before the the actual absolute end of the year. We'll, we'll, we we give her a provisional zero with the, <laughs> the idea. yeah, because we still have time. There's still right? time. Yeah, there's, there's still time. a couple of weeks left. That's true. I mean, they could come out with a confirmation on their Twitter account. That's yep. usually where they come out with uh, mm -hmm. leak confirmations. So I'm definitely going to be keeping tabs on it because 
you know, if these if the specs are correct, is looking pretty cool. So yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> we'll update the show notes or, or run a scroll or something. Uh, Break all right. the news. Yeah. Uh, your last one here is Log4Shell will lead to several data dumps and leaks in 2022 from vulnerable servers that attackers were actively targeting before the patches became available. Um, this this was correct. So we did have, for example, uh, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA here in the United States, uh, they even came out with information back in July saying that like 130 gigs um, of data was stolen via these log for shell um, vulnerabilities through VMware Horizon. So VMware Horizon was the really big one that yeah, a lot yeah. of people were talking about over the summertime, but there were also unpublicized leaks and um, uh, information internally with businesses that I don't necessarily have access to, but I know happened, uh, <laughs> that, that included data leaks that happened from Log4Shell. But given that that information isn't necessarily public. Uh, the one that I'm going to stick with will be the VMware Horizon one. That was a really big one. So mm -hmm. it has been a major issue and it continues to be a problem to this day. Log4Shell is still a vulnerability that a lot of companies have not patched. Yeah. Uh, but given patches are now available, the prediction that I gave in this video um, was correct. It, it indeed came correct within the first couple of months of 2022. So how are we feeling? Are we giving her the point? Give her the point. Yeah. 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 I mean, even point. if this is a little bit like saying, that one. <laughs> you know, the basketball is arcing towards the basket and you're like, I'm going to make that shot. Like, you, you you know, this is this is a hard one to get wrong, honestly. Yeah, but, <laughs> it was. But as long as Michelle had started, I believe, yeah. in like Q4 of 2021. So we already knew it was going to be a problem. And then it kind of expanded from there. So yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a good one for me to put in there. It was a strong one. Yeah. It was strategic <laughs> prediction, predicting, it was, right? It was, it was very yeah. strategic. Was a good yes. One. Yeah, <laughs> you get points for that, if nothing else. All right, Stephanie, you ready to go for yours? All righty, let's go. Uh, first one you made was, we will see an, another even more catastrophic AWS outage. Um, I, I don't know that I can get maybe partial credit for this maybe. one. Yeah. Um, there were, Cause there were some outages. There were some outages. I mean, I was thinking back to the one that happened back last December that like yeah. just completely obliterated so much, you know, so many different, um, services. So I don't think we've seen something to that magnitude, but, um, we've definitely seen some fairly major outages specifically this month. There was mm -hmm. something in Ohio, um, in the Eastern region that, that affected, um, um, AWS for about an hour and a half almost. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm happy to not take this point if, if that means <laughs> that we have not seen, you right. know, outages on the level of last December. So, you know, but but we've seen them. So, yeah. and, I, and I mean, that, that that's kind of inevitable, but but I'm happy to, to, to not take this point considering we haven't seen anything as bad as, as what happened last year. But in your prediction, you did not say that it had to be as bad. You just said catastrophic. catastrophic. So, like, what what defines? Well, it says even. Well, it said even more catastrophic. <laughs> so, so I think I was going off even of more, even yeah. worse than than last year. Um, so, I mean, I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to be wrong about this one. I'm just gonna <laughs> leave that one there. I'm happy to be wrong. I, I feel like if you had just said we'll see another AWS outage, you you get a right. full point. Right. So it's oh, yeah, the even right. more. I'm going to go give, with half. Yeah. Do we give her half? I'll take the partial credit. Half. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say half. partial credit. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. Cool. Uh, your second one was uh, a couple got married in the metaverse. There will be more metaverse relationships. Divorce. <laughs> I think I should get a point for this one. We're definitely seeing the rise of, mm -hmm. um, you know, platforms and, and spaces in the metaverse where people can can meet and meet up and, and get married. Marriage is still not technically legal in the metaverse, but people are having ceremonies yeah. there and, you know, oh. it, it's become an entire industry. So um, I, I think this one kind of has has panned out pretty well. Yeah. And you put a question mark by that divorce. That was not part of the prediction. That was just a, right. like a kind of a bonus <laughs> thought uh, there. So, yeah. And that would have been extra credit if that came true, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. There's even like international marriages going on, I've seen. Yeah. 
right? It, Where people get married by Zoom so that they they could so that they are they're able to get married even though they're not in the place where the license is or something I, I can't remember all the details but there's all kind of different things happening now and you know now people need a software engineer in addition to a wedding planner and and it's just it's become this entire industry you know so it, it'll be interesting to see going forward if I guess, you know, I'm not making predictions for next year, but it'll be interesting to see if we find a way to make these marriages somehow legal because they are sort of cementing or officiating the marriage through yeah, NFT yeah. and blockchain now. Um, it's still not the same as actually being married legally in any particular state, but it'll be interesting to see how they make these legal if, if, if that's yeah. possible. Yeah, as I understand it, you have to do the paperwork for the marriage still, the license and everything the yeah, traditional way. Absolutely. And then you could have your ceremony in the metaverse because nobody really cares where the ceremony is on. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. Full point for that one, Shannon, Nika? Yep, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, then the final one, Apple introduces hardware that finally makes VR cool slash mainstream. <laughs> now, if we go off of finally makes cool mainstream, <laughs> then, then maybe we don't get the point. But, you know, we are, you know, Apple is introducing a headset. Um, the, the date keeps getting moved yep. um, all over the place for next year. So I think the latest is, is later on in mm -hmm. the year 2023. Um, will it make VR cool and mainstream? I don't know about that just because I think the potential price point is still going to be out of reach for so many people. It's looking to mm. be around $2,000 to $2,500 for, um, for this thing. So um, I don't think that makes it mainstream for anybody, even the the biggest Apple aficionados, um, that that price point is just too high to make this something that is going to see mass adoption um, when it comes out next year. This is where we need rollover yeah. predictions. Yeah, because, yeah. Because Apple hasn't introduced anything yet. So, so you know, like you, you haven't got the details. You haven't got the things. Apple itself has not said a thing about this. So right. maybe to investors, right? But I bet by the end of next year, you'll be able to point to this and say, nailed it, right? It just, it was just, they didn't make the deadline. They didn't make the deadline, but there are, you know, patents out for, mm -hmm, for different mm -hmm. software and all this other stuff. So I, I think it's, you know. It's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. It's coming around but, the bend. Yeah. yeah. But, but will so we all, what will we all be wearing them? Probably not. Big shrug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shannon, Nika, are we giving any points here? <laughs> I'm going to say zero, but it's a zero with a very positive motion. <laughs> like, <laughs> you were ahead of your time, girl. You go. <laughs> zero with an asterisk. I'll take zero yes. with an asterisk. Of, that's a and the really year's good still not one. over yet. And we know it's that's true. We can, and we the can, year's we still can, not over yet. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? They, they, they might, may surprise us. They may surprise yeah. us. Still. All right, Nika, you ready? I'm ready. Uh, so your first prediction was affordability availability and mainstream adoption ar vr headsets of of ar vr headsets especially for typical in-person events like concerts sporting events multi-stream in-person and virtual events mm. yeah i gave too much detail <laughs> yeah i think so i think i think if because, you just yeah, gotta stopped keep early in that sentence yeah yeah yeah, because the, the affordability kind of knocks me out because I didn't specifically say Apple. I just said VR headsets overall. And we did get the announcement from Facebook, well, Meta, about mm -hmm. the MetaQuest Pro. But that's starting at $1,500. We just talked about the coming around the bend of Apple with their reality OS or reality one or whatever, whatever they're going to eventually call it. Mm -hmm. So in theory, and I guess technically, the headsets you know, particularly on the meta side have been announced, but I think the affordability really kind of knocks the wind out of the sales a bit because, mm -hmm. you know, $1,500 for the MetaQuest Pro, the assumption is that the reality one or the Apple headset or Apple glasses or whatever they're going to call it is going to possibly be around 2000. So the affordability, the availability will be there. Mm -hmm. The availability is there, but the adoption and affordability, I think are really unfortunately hard sells because not everyone is going to be able to spend that amount of money on a headset. We have the current Oculus, which is, I think, like $300 mm -hmm. from Meta, yeah, the, Quest that people, two, right? the Quest 2 that people have and use. 
um, quite a bit. But um, as far as, you know, the, I guess, more mainstream type usage, I think it's, it's going to be a hard sell, especially on the prediction of the affordability angle. So kind of, but I don't know. Yeah. Quest raising the price <laughs> yeah. was, 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 uh, unfortunate there. I think I'd yeah. give you more, more credit on the adoption part than you're giving yourself. Like we, we definitely saw more people buying these things. There was a black pink concert, uh, in, in, in Fortnite, but it was kind of a, you know, metaverse VR, uh, presentation where if you were looking at it in VR, you could zoom in and around. There was some world cup stuff that that's being done in VR, I don't know, Stephanie, you're the one that we just were like, nope, they didn't make it. So, so nope, you don't get credit. Yeah. Um, how, how are you feeling yeah, here? It, it, I think we all yeah. felt like this whole meta and, and, you know, meta more than anybody probably felt like this whole metaverse thing was going to be a lot bigger thing than it ended up being. Um, and, and who knows eventually where it ends up going. But I think as far as you know, concerts and sport. I mean, I guess since we have seen those things, I'd be willing to give, you know, partial credit. Partial. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because it's not like those things have not happened at all. I think they maybe haven't happened in the, at the scale that, you know, we may have all expected them to, yeah. um, but, but they have happened. So we got to yeah. give, we got to give partial credit. I okay. agree. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're giving you we're giving you a half point there. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, because you, you got you got some of it right. Uh, I think you could judge your next one as being true for all the wrong reasons. Right. Exactly. Crypt- cryptocurrency goes mainstream. <laughs> and I guess the definition is what are we considering mainstream? We have um, all of these bankruptcies of these cryptocurrencies. We have these crypto billionaires Mm. all of a sudden losing all their money. Some of them, Mm -hmm. unfortunately losing their lives. (laughs) Um, (laughs) people, you know, really just kind of tanking their investments in this, because I mean, it's just been over this past year, it's just been repeated issues and issues with the way that, um, crypto is being managed, how it's being handled, you know, with the Voyager, it was like, you know, we lost all your money, but we'll give you Voyager coin coins. <laughs> and it's like, what am I going to do with this? That's not equal to the actual dollar amount that I put in there. So in the sense that everybody's talking about it, there are a lot of people who have invested in it from, you know, celebrities and, you know, the super wealthy down to your everyday man who has, you know, sank money into crypto. So I guess technically it went mainstream, but um, not necessarily in the best way. Yeah, what's more mainstream than uh, I mean, scandal and and seriously, <laughs> yeah. it's like you you kind of got to give it. She didn't say, yeah, you know, mainstream where everyone would have some. Uh huh. I would say it, that's it, a point. It's now a part of the public lexicon and definitely, and yeah. So yeah, I think I think that one gets a point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This yeah. this is this is a, a good example of how to craft your predictions, right? <laughs> this is kind of vague and broad. It could, right, yeah. it could go either way. Like, yeah, well done. You know, the first one was the first one was a little bit too detailed. Right, right. The second one was like mm, this one was perfect. On the surface. <laughs> All right, and then your third one was easy availability of electric vehicles, including a massive increase in charging stations. So um, for this particular one, I think we may have just gotten this in under the wire. Um, I believe um, middle of this week, um, General Motors announced that they were rolling out a new program of installing um, the first of 40,000 new EV chargers. Um, We have the Biden infrastructure bill to kind of point Mm -hmm. to where they allotted, um, you know, toolkits for um, a network of uh, 500,000 electric vehicle chargers. And this includes not just, um, you know, the uh, larger cities and metropolis areas. This includes rural areas as well. So I think um, I think this one hit as well. I mean, the only thing I'd pick on would be the word massive. How, how do you how you interpret the word massive? I mean, I'm not mad at that, though, especially, yeah, yeah. you know, based on what what Nika just said about, you know, make possibly 500,000 new chargers, 40,000 mm-hmm. GM like that's that could be you know, massive. 
Yeah, exactly. We can make the case for massive for that. So yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. in relation to where it is now or right. what it was Relative. before, that is right. if you look at the relatively relativity aspect, it is quite a jump. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, every company, most every car company now is coming out with the EV line if they don't already have it. Um, and it's becoming, you know, the the cars themselves are becoming more popular. So by default, you know people need places to charge their vehicle if they're using it to travel around their state, around the country. So I, I think so. Um, I think it only from here, I think it will only get bigger. Yeah. 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 All I, right. give, I give her a point. I give the point for that one. Yeah. We're giving yep. you the point. Good job. All right. Uh, <laughs> folks, uh, how did you do on your own personal predictions? Let us know by email. We've got an email address. Send us your your thoughts uh, or, or, or anything. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Now it's time to get to my predictions. So I throw myself on the mercy of the court. <laughs> uh, here we go. The first one I said, and I think we were all... all even if we weren't exactly like excited about cryptocurrency, we were all thinking it seemed to be going up, uh, you know, in, 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 in many ways I said, uh, and this isn't a cryptocurrency thing, but it's, it's in that realm, decentralized identity projects would get momentum and uptake. Hmm. So ways to validate your, uh, your identity uh, in in a web three quote unquote way, like like some way that where your identity you didn't have to log into a central server controlled by a company, you'd be able to validate your identity some other way. Ah, uh, are we yeah. including like pass keys and things like that in there? Yes, because <laughs> like if that gets me my, if that yes. gets me a partial credit, then yes, we are. I, I, That's think, what I, mean I think exactly. pass keys. Pass keys are becoming very popularized. A lot of um, a lot of brands are implementing pass keys. For example, Chrome is. We just learned about that um, on day of recording. So yeah. I I think that Several definitely gives you at least half a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, Pesky honestly was probably in the back of my mind, but really wasn't what I was thinking. I was thinking more about yeah. solid, you know, those the like uh, Tim Berners Lee's uh, interrupt, like verify, yeah, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. uh, if you're all, if y'all are going to give me the half point uh, for Pesky's, I'll take I'll take it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, you know, again, momentum and uptake is subjective, so mm. it, it is. maybe didn't get the type of momentum mm. you were expecting, but but we are seeing things move in that direction. So I'm, I'm, I'm cool with the half point. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah no, I think that's fair. Uh, my second one. Oh my gosh. When matter launches expected in June, which it didn't <laughs> launch in June, I should have just predicted it won't launch in June. Would have nailed it. Uh, right. It launched in October. Uh, it will measurably boost smart home adoption, which it hasn't because it just launched in October. Uh, I thought it would launch in June and, and it would boost things more. We'll probably see that get boosted a lot more last yeah. or next year. Um, we'll yeah. probably hear about it a ton at CES in January. But yeah, yeah Kurt, I don't. I haven't seen a boost in no, smart home yet. adoption. It's way too early. It yeah. was probably too early for it to launch in June. And really, this this was an incredibly aggressive prediction. It was aggressive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think it will, I think this is another role. Like if I could roll it over, then yeah, it will eventually, I think have an effect. Yeah. It just, I, I, it wasn't going to have an effect that fast. But the so. fact that matter did ultimately launch and yes. it is starting to kind of take root a little bit. I mean, I'd give you half for that. For just <laughs> That's incredibly that. generous. <laughs> for, for the fact that matter did launch. And I think once people really, understand what it can do and the way it can improve yeah. you know if you choose to go the smart home route i think it's going to ramp up pretty quickly once people really understand you know what it is and what it can do for them i agree tom you should just roll that one over yeah <laughs> that's gonna go in my <laughs> rollover go. minutes for anybody who remembers what rollover minutes used to be <laughs> all right this last one uh, Stephanie, Stephanie, uh, was very skeptical of this one when I made it. Uh, and I I'm don't feel, I, I was going to say, yes. I don't feel good about being right because of the reason, but I said the chip shortage will end. Uh, and, uh, it turns out, yeah, because of inflation and, and a <laughs> decline yep. in purchasing power, uh, we've got chip gluts because we're now. all broke. Yeah. We can't afford to buy chips. We're priced so now there's out. plenty of them. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, it's the same as Nika's, um, you know, cryptocurrency goes mainstream. It, right. it went mainstream for all the wrong reasons. And, and yeah. same here that the chip shortage ended for all the wrong reasons. So it, you well, know, hopefully right this a, means that the chip chip costs will decline and we'll be able to yeah. building computers again next year. And we have seen some GPU prices coming down, which is a good sign. Right, so, yeah. right. Yeah. But you got to get the point, though. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have to feel good yeah. about it. But yeah. the point. <laughs> but it's yours. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so uh, now it's time to turn to Sarah Lane's predictions. Hey, everybody. Uh, Sarah here with my predictions for what was going to happen in 2022. So I was feeling pretty good about this first one, and I, I think I got partially right, uh, certainly not all the way right. But I had predicted that Apple would announce a VR headset this year. Didn't happen. Still probably happening. Well, it is happening, uh, but it's, it didn't happen in 2022. Uh, but what I did say was the VR part of the announcement would be that there would be a big Fitness Plus tie-in. Fitness Plus is obviously Apple's um, way to do a variety of exercise classes and yoga and stretching and meditation and stuff from more or less the comfort of your own home. And uh, up until now, it's needed an Apple Watch. So at the end of 2021, I didn't have an Apple Watch. I, I do now. So I've since uh, gotten used to Fitness Plus and it's a really good product. But uh, I, uh, a lot of people are going to be left out if they didn't have Apple Watches or had some sort of alternative smartwatch. So uh, what Apple did announce uh, uh, when it announced the Series 8 Apple Watch and some updates to Fitness Plus earlier this year, uh, kind of in its fall announcement, uh, big lineup, was that uh, Fitness Plus was going to be able to use without an Apple Watch. So, you know, I was kind of onto something there. We didn't get that VR headset. We might not even get it in 2023. In fact, it's looking like 2024, but you never know. Uh, but let's call the 25% right on that one. Uh, moving on, Elon Musk stepping down as Tesla CEO was my second person prediction. Didn't get that one right. Uh, very much a fail. Elon Musk uh, has been in the news uh, for the better part of this year, uh, to my anger and fury. Not because for any reason, just because sometimes I just don't want to talk about the same person every dang day. But uh, it, he took over Twitter, uh, is still in that uh, seat, is still the Tesla CEO. Don't think that's going to change uh, before the year comes to a close. So uh, he definitely dominated the news, but not for the reasons that I thought he would. But in my defense, I did think that his problematic being in the news was going to lead to him having to step down as Tesla CEO, maybe because of, you know, some sort of conflicts of whatever. And uh, nope, he sure doubled down and just bought another company instead. Uh, so now we're in a very different situation. Uh, finally, and this one was a little bit of a, uh, a softball to myself, but I said NFTs, uh, while now observed with caution would be something that we used to do and we used to talk about and we all lost money on in 2021. I think that's pretty fair. Now I'm going to say full disclosure, I've never bought an NFT. I've dabbled in crypto just a bit. Um, and I got a little sucked into it at the end of 2021 because there were just high valuations for things and people seemed to be able to make money out of thin air. Uh, that is, has not been the case uh, a year later. Uh, we've seen a lot of projects, NFTs among them, really plummet in value. And doesn't mean that uh, there's not still a lot going on there, but I think a lot of people lost money and just said, okay, hold on, I, I need to be a little bit more careful about what kind of stuff I'm getting involved in in the future. Like, what is this? What, you know, what, what does it mean to me? Who's the community? Um, and, you know, am I really a person who's buying art anyway? Um, and, and or, or creating art. Uh, you know, there, a lot of creators have, have, started to think a little bit harder about you know how they fit into this um this this whole world and, and i think 2023 is going to be a lot more of the same you know we're, we're still trying to figure it out but those were my predictions uh i think i i think i did okay <laughs> i've never gotten three for three in any year that we've done this before so i feel fine how well do you guys think that i did yeah the well, second obviously one number hilarious. two is wrong yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, right no, no point for number two right. we can go I think number three negative because he got a he got a different ceo <laughs> title <laughs> an additional <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> negative one for her Sarah, that one. <laughs> um, number, three, number three i think is is kind of um I think it's another one of those, like, I, in fact, I, I don't even think it's, it's right for the wrong reasons. Like she kind of said, like, uh, it'll be something we did and talked about and lost money on. And, and those are all true. Oh, so yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, are, are then, people still talking about NFTs? Because I haven't heard that. Yeah, but she didn't say much. we'd keep talking about it. She said, we'll do it. We'll talk about it. And then we'll lose money. It, right. Like, if you want to get, it's, you it's know, trending. into the semantics, it it, mm-hmm. it feels like it's it feels like she's saying it'll be something we did and then forgot about. Yeah. And it um, and then lost money. But on I don't, and then it fades. I don't think we're, I don't think we're going to forget about them. I think they're still no, going to be yeah. around and everything. That's yeah, right. But, but, but I think that's, it's, it's, um, I think it's accurate enough. Yeah, I agree. No, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm with that. I'm with you on that. I think yeah. that's a point. Yeah. That's a yep. point. Yeah. That's a and point. Then, mm-hmm. She's arguing for a half point on the Fitness Plus launch, even though there was no VR headset to go with it. So they did launch Fitness Plus. Mm-hmm. But and they tied it into the Apple Watch. There was, there's no hardware. Yeah, except or, for or, the Apple or Watch. They, they, no... they, you, don't, you don't need the Apple Watch. They launched Fitness Plus, so you don't need the Apple Watch anymore. But right. there's no headset hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right, because it, but that, but the, but it was pretty much all about the headset. You know, it wasn't yeah. about the, the fact that Fitness is. Plus was. Yeah, the predictions about the headset is not about really Fitness Plus launching or not launching or. You know. She added the Apple Watch will no longer be required. Maybe a quarter okay. point. Well, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I mean, if you want to get technical, uh, we love Sarah. Like, I, I'd be happy with a quarter point. All right, know? all right. But yeah. yeah, it seems like posterity. Goes, like, we'll give her a quarter point. Yeah, the rest of all of that seems <laughs> predicated Nick is on like, come on, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, there you go. That is our our check in on our predictions from 2022. Thank again. Thanks you, you all for being willing to do this. This is good fun, and I, I appreciate fun. you being good sports about it. <laughs> uh, we will now check in with Roger Chang for the final tally of how Uh-oh. we did. Roger, Drum roll, please, please tell right. us. So uh, let's do a quick uh, overview. Shannon got two. Stephanie e. got 1.5. Nika got 2.5. <gasps> oh. Tom got two. And Sarah got one and a quarter. Nika. <laughs> right. Nika wow. Wins. And I did it. I was not confident. <laughs> right. <I'm coming> into <laughs> w. <this. laughs> Take the win. Yeah, yeah, take the win. Seriously. Way to go. I wasn't confident at all. Well done. Uh, Those were and good then predictions. Now you start a consulting business. That's the next step. Right, right. <laughs> Based on your past wins. Uh, future performance is no predictor of past performance. And, you know, and then Absolutely. yeah, and then you charge people $10,000 an hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. I will say overall, all of you did a pretty good job like of reading mm-hmm. the uh, reading the tea leaves as it were and kind of yeah. extrapolating what would happen i mean you know some of the some of the stuff is like you know black swan stuff like the whole elon musk uh, yeah, right. thing but but for the most part i mean you know i think everyone did better than than they thought they would yeah 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 definitely. i agree definitely yeah nothing was nothing was outlandish it was all all within the realm so yeah good 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 stuff uh of course everybody stick around we will be doing our predictions episode for next year with a whole with, with we'll be subjecting a whole new crew of people to the scrutiny uh so so keep your eye out for that in the feeds uh but before we go here uh big thanks to everybody here uh for participating stephanie humphrey uh well done congratulations happy new year uh where can folks find more of what you got going on you can just follow me all around the web at Tech Life Steph. I'm usually hanging out on Instagram most uh, most of the time. So at Tech Life Steph. Fantastic. Nika Monford, uh, our champion. Where can folks find more of what you got going on? I am at Tech Savvy Diva on all the social media outlets. But for now, you can finally find me mostly on Twitter. Okay. Shannon Morse, what about you? YouTube.com slash Shannon Moore spelled just like my name. Um, I'm actually doing a predictions video, which was very much inspired by DTNS, where I brought on some of my tech YouTuber friends oh, cool. and asked them what they think is going to happen next year. So if you want to hear even more predictions after watching the DTNS prediction video, check it out. Excellent. The more predictions, the better. Thank you, Shannon. Appreciate it. <laughs> 
Uh, and thanks to everyone for helping support the show uh, all year long in 2022. We could not have done it without you. You can always support the show at any level. And we've got new reward merchandise. Uh, every three months you stay a patron, you'll get a different item with Len Peralta's nine-year anniversary art on it. Uh, DTNS is, is turning nine on January 2nd. Uh, so sign up now if you haven't already. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash Patreon. No live shows this holiday week. Week. We're normally live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. That'll come back January 3rd at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. But we are back tomorrow with our tech predictions for 2023 with Will Smith, Ayaz Akhtar, and Andrea Jones-Roy. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>